What's going on, Audioholics? This is Tyler from Audioholics Anonymous, and this is the second episode of Getting Into Prague. In the first episode, I covered my gateway drug, Dream Theater, which was fun to do, but I was itching to listen to some new music this time around. And in this episode, I will do that in the form of the ultra-unique Prague act, Gentle Giant. Now, my history with this band is completely non-existent. I didn't even know they existed before doing research into potential bands to cover on this series. And I am glad that I did come across them, because they are a very interesting outfit. So, in this video, I will be covering the 1973 album, In a Glass House, followed by the 1972 album released before it, Octopus. Now, without further ado, let's get into my general thoughts. So, what do I think of this band? Well, when I first listened to this album, I really didn't know what to make of them. The... The album cover is really bad, and the music, well, it was hard to figure out whether I enjoyed it or if I hated it with every fiber of my being. Especially with songs like The Inmate's Lullaby, which I could honestly understand some people just calling trash. That said, after a number of listens, this album did end up winning me over, and the band as a whole has gained a new fan, which I will talk about more at the end of this video. Now, this album, In a Glass House, is supposedly a loose concept on a loose concept album on the old aphorism, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, which is basically just don't be a hypocrite. If I'm a smoker, I shouldn't criticize other people for smoking, that sort of thing. Now, there is nobody that sounds like Gentle Giant, guys. This is really unusual music, and depending on who you are, that could easily be a good thing or it could easily be a bad thing. This is definitely not something that will appeal to everyone. I'll say that right now. Even Prague fans, I could see some people really hating this. However, I think that the band succeeds in what it tries to do, which is something that you can't say about every band. And so even if you walk away from an album like this saying, I didn't really enjoy it, it's not my thing, I would say it's at least worth a listen and if nothing else, at least you've widened your horizons to a new idea of what music can sound like. So let's get right into the tracks. The first track is The Runaway, and this song opens with some nice ear candy forming uh, in a cool beat forming from glass breaking. This album really makes me rethink the possibilities of what can be considered an instrument, and the next album does a similar thing. Uh, the main musical theme of this song never gets old, and the various instruments used make for a really interesting sound that you just can't get anywhere else. The melodies in this song make it really fun to listen to as well. I absolutely love the vocals in this band, and I know this may be a contentious thing to say, but I think prog vocals are amongst the best vocals that you can find in rock and metal music. The vocals that you get in this band are absolutely phenomenal. They are top tier, in my opinion, and they fit the music so perfectly. In this song, I think that they fit the main melodies really, really well. It's just really fun to listen to. It's high energy. It is unique. And to that end, I would consider this one of the best songs on the album. So let's move to An Inmate's Lullaby, the second track. Now, this is a very weird song. It kind of makes me want to laugh a bit when I hear that main riff being played on the unusual instruments used on this track. This is a song where all the instruments are actually percussion. You have your usual, your usual drums and things of that nature, but you also have unusual instruments like glockenspiel and marimba. And the use of these weird instruments add an interesting effect to the song. I'm not sure it really worked. It kind of makes the whole song sound a bit childish, kind of like a song you'd hear in a kid's show. It's still interesting, but nothing I would listen to outside of this album. That said, although I'm not really a fan of it, I don't think I'd call it bad. I wouldn't skip it if I were to listen to this album again, but it is probably the weakest song here, and I would even say most likely the weakest song on both albums. That brings us to Way of Life, and this is a really upbeat track, whereas the last one was really kind of dissonant in ways and, uh, you know, dark. This is complete opposite of that. I really like the vocals on this track and the way that they interact with the instruments. Really cool counterpoints. 
really love the structure of the song as well. And as always with this album, and, and frankly with the band in general, there is awesome use of really unusual instruments. Awesome outro, really cool song. I dig it. So next we have Experience, and this song is fantastic. Easily one of my favorite songs on the album, and everything I said prior about the instrumentation applies tenfold on this song. This is probably the most proggy song on the album, and it absolutely rules. So the next song in the album is A Reunion, and this is a nice little intro track to my favorite song on the album, the title track in A Glass House. Despite that, I actually find this song really pleasing to listen to, and I don't think I would listen to the last track on the album without listening to this first. I think they blend together so well that I think you're kind of missing out on some some cool context if you don't listen to this first. Sorry about that. I just banged the microphone to something. I don't know if you heard it, but yeah. So let's go to that last song now, though, In a Glass House. Now this, like I said, is my favorite song on the album by far. I love the musical themes and ideas expressed in this song using the same level of instrumentation. This is the song that really made this band's style click with me. It's really good. It is also cool to note that uh, the song actually ends with a hidden track that contains a small excerpt from every song on the album. Now, I don't know what you consider a good a mark of good writing, but personally, I think it is a tremendous mark of good songwriting. When you can tell each song from just using one tiny excerpt from each, this is just really well-written stuff, guys. I mean... If you were to put a pop head in a room with a metal head, okay, and you were to play tiny excerpts from Metallica, Disturbed, ACDC, Iron Maiden, I'm not convinced the pop head would be able to tell the difference between all of those. Maybe like slightly, but they all sound kind of the same. If you put, uh, you know, Taylor Swift's, Billy Eilish, whatever else, in front of the metalhead, I'm sure he would say something similar. But you put Way of Life and The Runaway and Inmates Lullaby together to either of them, and they're all going to think, like, this is entirely different. Because each song on this album is just so unique. It has its own identity. It almost sounds like a different band sometimes. And that's one thing I'll say about this band in general. I think they definitely have what you would call a sound. Like you you listen to Gentle Giant and you know it's Gentle Giant because of the way that they use all these different instruments and uh, this, the melodies that they choose to have with the vocals. But that said, the individual songs, if you were to judge them based on that alone, they have such a different feeling to each of them. It's It's really awe-inspiring how much of a unique identity each song on this album has and i would say that's a testament to the songwriting even on a song i don't love like an inmate's lullaby it has such a distinct identity to, that if you were to play any single 10 second interval of this song i would know what it is i would know that something uh in experience was ex in it was the song experience you know, and, and that's not something you can say about every band. I'm sh yeah, there are bands like that, but even with Dream Theater or something like that, it can be really hard to tell the difference between one song and another. If I were just to pick, you know, a 10 second interval from home during the instrumental break and compare it to a 10 second interval from like Change of Seasons and put them side by side. I'm not even sure you'd be able to tell they were different songs. And keep in mind, I consider A Change of Seasons to be one of the best songs ever made. So I'm not crapping on Dream Theater. I'm just saying that Gentle Giant has a skill to make things sound distinct that I don't see a whole lot of other bands uh, possessing. And that's a huge mark for this band. And... This is just all in all a very unique album with its own distinct identity. It is chock full of all kinds of influences. Every instrument under the sun is used. 
This album uses all kinds of bizarre melodies and counterpoints, and all of this results in a very interesting album to listen to, though it can be one that can feel quite challenging at times. This is an album I believe that deserves to be one of the best prog albums of all time. Deserves to be considered one of the best prog albums of all time. It is enjoyable the entire way through. The only problem I have with it is that it is so unusual that it can actually be really hard to listen to sometimes. It's disconcerting. This is an album I would really need to be in a specific mood for, or it very well might piss me the hell off. That said, that is more of a personal complaint, and given that, I would give the album a very enthusiastic 9 out of 10, with the caveat that it is an album you have to go into with a very specific mindset in order to enjoy. All right, now let's get to talking about the second album today, Octopus. Now, all right, people, this is the second Gentle Giant album I had the pleasure of listening to. And though it does have a similar sound in a glass house, I would say it's an entirely different beast. I'd say it's probably a little bit more proggy, definitely more complex in parts. Uh, the title is a pun, Octopus, Octo Opus. It's basically a joke regarding the fact that there are eight tracks on this album. And apart from one song, I love the material on this record. I'll get into this a little bit more later, but each album I talk about today has a different strength. In a Glass House, it has the strength of each song having its own distinct identity that you can just point out immediately, but it suffers from being inaccessible. This album... Though it doesn't maintain the same level of quality as far as how different each song sounds, it is way more digestible as an album. I would more readily recommend this as an opening point into the band. It's more accessible than In a Glass House. And for that reason, I would actually consider it a better record. Like I said, I will get into this a little bit more later. But for now, let's get right into the tracks. So the first song is The Advent of Panurge. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is a really interesting song. It's a really cool opener. It is chock full of harmonies and the vocals layered over one another, which is a really neat effect that I enjoy. I really like the a cappella parts of this band. Especially when you pair that with the always unique variety of instruments, it creates such a cool sound. I feel it is one of the better songs by this band. Next, we have uh, Raconteur Trabador. I don't really like this song. It is pretty silly, but beyond that, the melodies and musical themes are just a swing and a miss for me. I can't say they've done anything objectively wrong here. It just isn't a song that appeals to me much, or at least not as much as the rest of the album. It is still a perfectly enjoyable listen, though, and I could see why some people would even say this is one of their favorites due to the weird, like, dancey feel of it. It kind of, listening to this song kind of feels like, you know, in Skyrim when you're in the bar and you listen to a bard playing. Uh, I'm sure that's on purpose, given the the title of the song, Trabador, which, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically, from what I understand, a Trabador was basically a bard. It was a traveling musician who sang songs. So, yeah. The third song is A Cry for Everyone. And this song, though I didn't enjoy the last one as much, this song is amazing. Easily the most complex song on either album, I would say. And I absolutely love it. This might be my favorite song off both albums. It's that good. So let's move on to Knots. I really love the intro in this song. This is true a cappella greatness leading into some really instru interesting instrumental combinations. Say that five times fast. This whole song is chock full of amazing vocal harmonies and it is very, very pleasing to listen to. It's a great song and definitely one of the more enjoyable ones on the album. Next, we have The Boys in the Band, and this is another example of one of the more complex aspects of this album, and I love, love, love it. It is an instrumental, and it is a treat to listen to. As great as the vocals in this band are, I love hearing them just go ham with an instrumental composition, because 
this is the only song on both albums i think that is instrumental so next we have dog's life and this is another song i really really like i can understand why this one might be you know a swing and a miss for you some people might not like this one as much but personally i really it just grips me i'm not sure i have much to say about it other than that it does remind me a bit of an inmate's lullaby but i consider it to be far better Next, we have Think of Me with Kindness, and this is this is basically the equivalent of a reunion from the last from the last album, but it's a bit longer and stands on its own, which that song didn't. I thought it was mostly just an intro track to the last song. Still, this this song is really pleasant. It's really, really, really pleasant. Believe me, it's really, 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 really. Okay, so River. This is the closer on the album, and it 100% rocks just as much as anything else on this record, if not more so in parts. And I still stand by A Cry For Everyone being my favorite, but this is really good too. So, my final thoughts on this album. This is an album that surprised me greatly. After my experience listening to and jamming within a glass house, I was actually worried this album wouldn't hold up. In my humble opinion, it is straight up better. And that album was already a 9 out of 10. The problem I had with that album is that all the, although the music was very distinct, it was really weird and disconcerting. And I felt that it was too inaccessible. Uh, even for someone who likes it. I'm not sure I could sit down and listen to that album all the time. This album, however, despite keeping up the same level of songwriting, instrumental ability, vocals... It's every bit as good as In a Glass House was, but it's more accessible. And I do believe they may have sacrificed the uh, what I praised In a Glass House for having uh, distinct identities in every song. I feel they probably did sacrifice that a bit in order to achieve this, but I would say that it's to the benefit of the album as a whole. I think that this album doesn't sacrifice quality or complexity. In fact, as I've already said, I think the music is actually better in a lot of ways. It is more complex, and in my opinion, actually better written overall. In the end, I will actually give Octopus a 10 out of 10, whereas I only gave In a Glass House a 9 out of 10, because I feel that... I think... Allow me to justify this a little bit. Some people might be saying right now, why are you taking off a point for an album being hard to digest, for being inaccessible? Just because it's inaccessible, that doesn't make the quality of the music worse. Right, I will agree to that, but I think there's something to be said for when you're, even if you're a fan of an album, if you're not in the very specific mindset to listen to it, then you're not going to enjoy it. And I feel like I should take a point off if you have to be in that very specific mindset in order to enjoy it, you know? With Octopus, I could come in and enjoy most of the tracks on this album no matter what mindset I have. I don't have to go into it wanting to hear a specific thing. I'm just going to want to hear a good prog album. And this isn't just a good prog album. It is a masterwork of prog. So that is my justification for giving this album a 10 out of 10, whereas I gave In a Glass House a 9 out of 10. So, now we have to ask a few questions. Did these albums make me a fan of Gentle Giants? Well, yes. I would actually be very interested in exploring the rest of the band's discography in the future. I think later down the line I might even do a wrong opinion on the band. Did this band make me interested in checking out more prog acts? Yes. If any other bands are nearly as unique as this one, then I am very much looking forward to listening to more. That said, this is not the first band I would show someone if they were trying to get into prog. This music can be very inaccessible at times, and due to that, this is a band that is probably best explored as someone who's already listened to a few prog bands in the past, like myself. All right, that does it for this episode of Getting Into Prague. And next time I'll be covering Red and In the Court of the Crimson King by, you know him, you love him, King Crimson.